Hello everyone, today we are going to present Vising theorem. So let me first introduce to you the statement of the Vising theorem. Let G be a simple graph with maximum degree of delta. So the edges of the graph can be colored using at most delta plus one colors, such that no two adjacent edges share the same color. So first, let me uh, go through some basic terms in this theorem. The first is simple graph. The simple graph is the unweighted and undirected graph with no graph loop and no multiple edges between uh, two, uh, two vertices. First, let me give you some examples of simple graph. This graph is a simple graph, but if we give the graph a direction here, it is not a simple graph. And if we give one of one or more edges a weight, it is still not a simple graph. Uh, if the graph contains a loop, or there are several uh, edges between two vertices, it is also not a simple graph. Second, let me introduce the degree of a vertex, which is also called valency to you. The degree of a vertex is the number of the graph edges which touch the vertex. So for example, uh, in this graph, for the vertex, the edges, uh, the degree of the vertex is two because there are two uh, graph edges which touch this vertex. Before moving to the next part, we should clarify two terminologies. The first is missing colors. Uh, since there are delta plus one edge co colors, and no more than delta edges at each vertices. Uh, for each vertices, there must have at least one missing color. Uh, for example, if we use five edge colors to color a vertex with a degree of four, so we have the colors of red, blue, green, and yellow and purple so we can mark this edges as red and blue and green and yellow so the color of purple is the missing color the the second terminology is kinship let a kin chain h a B be a connected subgraph which all edges colored by A or B alternatively. So there are two forms. The first is a cycle with even number of vertices. For example, for example, in this graph there are uh, even number of vertices. So we can label the edges with A and B alternatively. The second form is the uh, open path. Uh, ending at two vertices, which one of, one of A or B is missing. Um, after talking about the basic terminologies of Weising's theorem, uh, we are proceeding to its proofs. Uh, before the proof, Let's take a look at the definition of Weising's theorem. If G is a graph, all of whose vertices have degree uh, smaller or equal to delta, then its edges can be colored in no more than delta plus one colors. In this definition, we have two very important things, degree smaller or equal to delta and in no more than delta plus one colors. Uh, 
in the form of this definition, we can uh, we are thinking about using mathematical induction in the proof. To use mathematical induction, we first can categorize this problem into two conditions. The first one is there is no edges in a simple graph. So in this condition, we don't need delta plus one colors for sure. And the second condition is there is a specific number of edges, let's say M. So for this condition, we can simplify this problem into considering only one edge. So how to achieve this? Uh, let's assume uh, for M edges, we can color this graph in such way. So for a graph with M plus one edges, we can remove one edge and coloring the remaining M edges. So in this case, we need to only consider the one edge that we removed. For the second condition, which has M edges, we can also consider it by contradiction. Um, for example, let's assume there is a graph G star with M star edges that cannot be colored in such way, then we can, we can find a maximum of M, which is greater or equal to zero, but smaller than M star. That can, that can be colored using such a way. If we add one edge to this graph, which is called G1, and ha which has n plus one edges. According to the assumption, we cannot color this graph using such a way. But if we can prove that we can color this one in such a way, then we can prove that this statement is false by contradiction, which is also what we need to prove in Weising's theorem. So in, so in, overall, in both cases, we can simplify our problem to M plus one edges, where we can color the M edge, the M edges, and need to only consider the remaining one edge in the later parts. Continue with the proof. As we mentioned, we just need to think about the remaining edge. So let the edge to fit from between V and W1. And so let's consider about the first case. The first case is like both V and W1 missing the same color. the same color. So we only need to color the missing the, the remaining edge using this missing color. Then we are down here. Let's consider another case. Let's A missing at V and uh, let's another color B1 missing at W1. So and there uh there is a Kim chain terminating at V and the uh, color by A and B1. And also there are Kim Chen terminate at, at W1, also colored by A and B1.
and these two kim chan is destroyed. So we only need to swap the color of this kim chan so that at w1 the color missing will be a. Then v and w1 have the same missing color. So we can use a color a to color v and w1. Then we are done here. Let's consider about the third case. Here we have a Kim Chen edge using color A and B1 from V to W1. It looks like this. If we use blue to represent color A and use red to represent color B1, we can see if we give this point W2, we can see we color V W2 using the color of B1. And also we find here for W1, we're missing color, we're missing the color of B1. So we can steal this, this edge, this color B1 to connect to V W1. So if we erase this color B1 here and then connect to W1, so V W1, we're using the color of B1 so we can using the color of B1 to color the remaining edge here. Then, if we do this again, we add another color, let's say B2. So we will have a new Kim Chan of color A and B2. So it will look like this. <coughs> we can see we have a new Kim Chan here. And we give this point W3. We can find W2 also missing the color of B2 here. So we can steal the color of B2 from VW3 and connect it to VW2. So we can erase this or VW3 and connect VW2 using the color of B2. And then we can do this process again and again until WJ, which will be discussed later. Okay, so after stealing the colors from the letter W, we already have like the home cam chain here, like from W1, W2, and to WJ, and they are all connected to V. And the color connecting V and WJ, it should be the color BJ. And finally, after we still in all the colors, we will run out of color, and we still have the the last and but not least one w j plus one here just sign if we can connect this vertex into this campaign campaign chain, then we can we can prove this binding theorem by the final condition um so here we should notice that. Uh, the missing color of this vertex w j plus one let's say like w b j plus one uh it should not be a new color because we have already ran run up uh, run out of run out of color so we should say that uh it is a color like b i we have seen somewhere inside this campaign chain and also we should notice that the b j here actually we steal it from uh from the edge v w j plus one uh, considering our stealing rule before so uh, we should say that not only i is less than j plus one actually i is less than j okay so after we discussed this so we know that w j plus one here it is only missing the color b i so it ha it does have color i already and since it's missing bi so let's think about the cam chain from v to wi and this chain will have wi plus at this side and this chain should be h a b i so if uh, we just want to see if we can add this vertex wj plus one into this chain. If we can, then the proof is done. So um, first we should notice that uh, we've already known that i is less than j. 
So none of the vertex inside this chain will be equal to this vertex because uh, it's the max of the max here is w i plus one. It will be definitely less than this one. So they are not the same. So it should be outside this chain right now. And since it it already used the color a, so it will be inside of another chain like h prime a b i outside this chain they are, they are disjoint but we can do something to make them connected now recall that in condition one we use the like the the swap the swap things uh, the like the swap swap the color inside one chain so we can connect them together so uh, we can do the same thing here for this wj plus one here it is missing bi right now and if we swap the color inside this chain uh, this this vertex will be missing color a right now and v is also missing color a now we can connect them together and wj plus one will be connected into this chain and so for any like j plus one the final vertex we can add them inside to the cam chain, so the proof is done. In conclusion, we have proved uh, Weising's theorem in all three conditions. Uh, the first condition is that for V1 and W1, they have, this, uh, they have missed the same color, so we just need to add the missing color between them, and then we are done. For the second condition, we have two disjointed uh, cam chain. Uh, the, for the first one, W1 is missing A, while V is missing B. So if we swap the color of one of them, then, we, then W1 and V can have the same missing color. And then it becomes the condition 1, so we are down 2. Uh, for the third condition, we have a closed uh, cam chain and a disjointed part. So if we swap the color of the disjointed part, uh, it can match one of the branches in the cam chain, and then we are done. So, mm. all right, that's all for our presentation. Hope you enjoy. Thank you for listening. Bye bye.